All right, today I'm going to teach you through the partial quotients. Um, those of you that watch partial sums, partial differences, partial products, it's very similar. It's a good mental math strategy, but you could also use it paper and pencil. So to teach you this, I'm going to teach it to you through the paper pencil method. So let's say we had a number like 72, and we wanted to divide 72. Well, make a little division symbol like that. Um, some teachers call it the hang seven. You'll notice it um, resembles a seven. Um, but that we're going to set it up like that. And we're going to say we're going to divide it into six equal groups. So we have 72 divided by six. Now, what a traditional method would teach you is do how many seven, how many sixes would go into seven and put it up here and then subtract. And uh, we're not going to do that today. Today we're going to use our mental math strategy. So what we first want to think is at least how many sixes will go into here. And I want to tell you that the best way to start is always with 10 or 100. So let's think about this. Six, how many sixes would go in there? Well, I know six times 10 is 60, so that might work. Six times 100 is 600, so that's way too many. So let's just, we'll, we'll go with 10. I'm gonna write my 10 over in this area. So six times 10, or six groups of 10, or 10 groups of six, is going to give you 60. So we're going to subtract 60. Um, 2 minus 0 is 2. 7 minus 6 is 1. And we are left with 12. So the next thing we want to think is, how many times will 6 go into 12? Well, we're savvy with our math facts. We know that it is 2. 6 times 2 will give us 12. We subtract, and we are left with 0. Now it's very simple. I set that up very basic so we can take a look at um, that as our first example. And uh, the next one I'm going to do is going to be in blue. It's going to be a little bit different, but it's also going to have a lot of similarities. And we'll see uh, what we can think about with those similarities. So again, I'm going to take 144 this time, and I'm going to divide it by 6 again. Okay? Now you might notice that this is just double this, but... Um, it's with a purpose. So again, 10 or 100. Well, 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 100 is 600. That's way too many. So let's just start with 10. 6 times 10 is 60. Subtract it. Again, just like we did right here. We have 4. 14 minus 6 is 8. All right. Now, how many 6s will go into 84? Well, I know, again, 6 times 10 is 60. So at least 10. We'll subtract that, and we are left with 24. Now, how many 6's will go into 24? Well, 6, 12, 18, 24. It's going to be 4. 6 times 4 gives us 24. We subtract it, and we are left with 0. Again, we just add this up. 10, 20, and 24. Our answer is going to be 24. And obviously, we don't have any remainder. Now you'll notice that our answer is 12 over here, our answer over here was 24. Now I just wanted to get your brain thinking about this pattern that I'm going to show you. Now, those of you that are getting really quick on picking this up, I'm going to show you something about these two numbers. I'm going to give you the exact same problem as we just solved, but I'm going to show you a new way that you can solve this. So 6 and 6 is going to divide into 144. Now, you might get a very large number, and if you stuck with this 10, 10, 10, 10, you're making your work too difficult for you. Now, let's think about this. 6 times 10 is 60. Okay. Um, let's try another multiple of 10. Let's try 6 times 20. Well, let's just try that out. 20, well, I know 0. We'll get our 0 down. 6 times 2 is going to give us 12. We're going to subtract it here. Again, we subtract it, we get 4 and 2. 6 goes into 24 four times, and we are left with 0. Now our answer, 20 and 4, is going to equal 24, and again, we have no remainder. Now what's the difference between this strategy and this strategy? Not much, other than the fact that this is much quicker. Still the same answer, and you might want to start out with this strategy first, and then work your way towards this one. Okay. Now let's try one that has a remainder. Let's see exactly what that means. And 
and we'll, st we'll try a larger number. Let's try 342 divided by, um, let's try new numbers, divided by 7. Okay, well, we could go with 10. Let's just try 10. We'll try it a couple different ways. 7 times 10 is 70. Subtract it, we get 2. Okay, we'll try another 70. 10 and 7 minus 70. We get 202. Again, we could try another group of 7 times 10, which would be 70. And this pattern will work all the way down. We'll work all the way down. Now it's really just a matter of efficiency. Okay, how many times will 7 go into 62? Well, I know it's not 10. Uh, let's try one less. 7 times 9, that's 63, not quite. Well, 7 times 8, that's 56. And we are left with 6. Now, here's where you know when to stop. I'm going to circle this number down in red. If this number right here, 6 or whatever the case may be, is less than this number right here, that's your remainder. You can't put a whole group of 7 into 6. You're going to be working with fractions here. Now we add this up, 10, 20, 30, 48. We'll have 48. And our remainder is going to be 6. Now if you wanted to express that remainder as a fraction, it'd just be 48. The 6 is going to go on top, and the 7 is going to go on bottom because we are dividing by 7. Again, we'll try the exact same problem. I'll do this in blue so we can compare and contrast these. 342 divided by 7. Now I want you to think about the shortcut that we talked about and just the big difference that it really makes. Well, 10 would work. 20, that's 140. 30 is 210. Um, 40, 7 times 4 is 28, um, but it's multiple of 10, so 280. Um, 7 times 50, that's 350. That's close, but it's not good enough. So let's go with 40. Again, we can have our, use our zero trick. 7 times 4 is 28. And again, we'll subtract 2. And we're left to 62. Again, 7, we're going to 62 at least 8 times. No more, though. And we'll subtract here. 56 and 6. Well, again, this number is less than this number. So we add 40 plus 8 with a remainder of 6. Or the exact same answer, a little bit more mathematically sound, is 48 and 6 sevenths. Again, the exact same number. Now, here's why it's really important that you do this, or you do this to the best of your ability. Here, we have lots of opportunities to make just the slightest mistake in our, in our calculations. We're subtracting not once, twice, three, four, but five times. Here, if you pick the most efficient number, you're only subtracting twice. So, the more you can use your numbers, the more you know your facts, the much, uh, much easier time you're going to have with solving this out. So with that, I'm going to give you a couple problems that I'd like you to work on your own, and you'll come back and be able to check your answers with that. I'm going to give you one with a remainder, one without a remainder. If the one has a remainder, try to express it as a fraction. It's just good practice. We'll try 8. Again, the hang 7, or whatever you'd like to call it. Okay, 336 divided by 8. Remember, quotient's the answer here, so we'll do that in the parts. 336 divided by 8. And then the last one, we'll go 9 divided into um, 217. And we'll start with that, and come back to part 2, and we'll find the partial quotients to both of these math problems.